I want us to look at uh, Elijah. Yeah, it's good always to remind ourselves of uh, uh, these things. Always good to remind ourselves of this thing. Uh, this is uh, one person that uh, uh, we want to talk about Elijah and uh, just a uh, word of prayer. Let us bow. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this session as we go through thy word. We pray of thy spirit to guide us and Lord to remind us of those things that uh, are helpful unto our lives that uh, we may be able to continue in them in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one mysterious guy. He just appears from nowhere all of a sudden and uh, starts uh, doing things in uh, uh, Israel. And uh, the first place that uh, he appears, it is uh, in First Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishabite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto her, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. So uh, this is a mysterious guy that uh, appears unto Israel, uh, unto the land of Israel. There, there has been uh, a lot of uh, conjectures about this man and uh, uh, his uh, uh, history and where he comes from. Uh, one of them that I, I found in, interesting was uh, 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 the history that says that uh, Elijah met uh, Ahab in the book of First Kings, chapter sixteen, thirty-four. Look at it. In his days, in his days, did Hael the Bethelite build Jericho? He laid the foundation thereof in Abram, his first dome firstborn and set up the gates there often his youngest son Zegub according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Joshua the son of Nun. You remember when uh, Joshua was destroying the, the Jericho and he said that, that the city shall not be built in the book of Joshua chapter 6 and he said that whoever shall do it he shall do it at the cost of his firstborn and his lastborn in the book of Joshua. Uh, chapter 6 verses 26. So it is said by historians that uh, Ahab met, uh, Elijah met Ahab. Ahab had gone to this funeral of this guy who was a, a very prominent person in that land. He went to that funeral and uh, there were some things, there are some ceremonies that were done there uh, at the recommendation of Ahab and these guys that uh, Elijah saw they were not according to the word of God and then that is when he he, he started engaging Ahab been leading the children of uh, uh, the children of God or the land of Israel into uh, apostates that is one of the stories I found so interesting and then now he appears in 17 1 talking about it shall not rain uh, due to the evils that uh, Abraham was uh, uh, doing uh, 
Uh, we are told that uh, some 50 years after the death of Solomon, the world he left had changed so drastically. You know, Solomon, uh, the wise man, had led people into a great apostasy. And uh, E.G. White says that uh, the things that Solomon did, it was so hard to undo them. And uh, you understand uh, that he had a son. Is that Jeroboam? Was, was it the son? Jeroboam. We are not sure. Yes, Jeroboam. He is the author of rebellion. You remember what Jeroboam did? There is a prophet that came to the altar and uh, wanted to do something. And Jeroboam stretched his hand unto the uh, prophet and the hand turned leprous or died. Something of that kind. You remember that story? Yeah, and so he was the author of rebellion. While the prophet was prophesying, Jeroboam turned against him. This is what uh, Solomon left in the land of Israel when he died. The northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judea uh, had split. Following their split from the south, the northern tribes had fallen into terrible apostasy. From Jeroboam, a servant of Solomon, all the way to Omri, the north had gone from bad to worse. Now Israel had its worst king of all his name uh, was Ahab. And uh, why was Ahab the worst king? We are looking at Elijah because we are living in a world where God is going to look upon uh, Elijah. Just hold your finger in uh, First King chapter 17 and look at Malachi chapter 4. This, uh, I want us just to remind ourselves of familiar things and uh, the obligations we have for this time when actually he them. Uh, the kings of the world have allied themselves, the uh, religion and uh, the world have allied themselves into idolatry and into apostasy. And God says something in Malachi, Malachi chapter 4, Malachi chapter 4, verses uh, uh, verses 4, chapter 4, verses 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I'll send who? To you, Elijah, before, send you Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth uh, with a curse. And so Elijah will be sent in the end time to do a work that the first Elijah did. Amidst all these apostasies, Elijah will be sent. We are told that uh, Israel inherited a king who was worse and worse and worse, and his name was Ahab. Why was the king Ahab someone who was uh, deemed as so worse? Ahab, the kings of uh, Israel, somehow ruled under not uh strictly uh, uh, a hierarchical uh, structure but ruled under theocracy in which way it is god who uh, selected the kings of israel and gave them unto the people and the king had to rely on the prophets on the book of the law for ruling the country but here is ahab who uh, uh, starts ruling and uh, he he, he he in some way established a, a hierarchy and doesn't consider the book of the law somehow so important. And uh, we know that um, Solomon had married some strange women, yes. And uh, But Ahab went more than that. He married this woman called Jezebel. Jezebel, the daughter of Omri. Uh, is it the daughter of Omri, and uh, she actually taught the children of God of Israel to serve Baal. She taught the children of Israel to serve Baal, and uh, uh, we found that. Uh, and in the in, in in First Kings chapter 16, 29 and thirty, sixteen, twenty nine and thirty, and in the thirty and Eight year of Asa king of Judah began Ahab the son of Omri to reign. Oh, Ahab was the son of Omri. Uh, 
the Jezebel. Jezebel was the daughter of Ithabel. Uh, that is the thing. And Ithabel was uh, 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 the one who was the key proponent in uh, 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 in the worship of Baal. And so uh, when you read the uh, first Kings 16 to 9, 30, it says, And the 30 and 8 year of Asa king of Judah began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria 20 and 2 years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Above all that were before him. How? Uh, he married this woman called Jezebel and she taught uh, uh, the children of Israel to worship Balim. And uh, uh, in, uh, in the book of uh, Patriarchs and Kings, uh, this is what we find in the PK 114. PK 114, it says, Two years before the death of Asa, Ahab began to rule in the kingdom of Israel. From the beginning of his reign was marked by a strange and terrible apostasy. PK 114. His father Omri, the founder of Samaria, had wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. First Kings 16.25 But the sins of Ahab were even greater. He did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all kings of Israel that were before him, acting as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Verses 33 to 31. Not content with the encouragement, encouraging the forms of religious service follow, followed at Bethel and Dan, he boldly led the people into the grossest heathenism by setting aside the worship of Jehovah for Baal worship. So we find that he is the first bold king to set aside the worship of Jehovah to the worship of Baalim. That is why we are told that he did the worst more than the kings that um, were before him. He led Israel to worship Balim. Who is the, this God, Baal? What is the worship of Baal, actually? Baal is the sun God, is it? We had forgotten. It was sun worship. It was sun worship. Sun worship did not start just at the onset of King Ahab. It is something that started in Babylon a long time ago at uh, the at Shina. And so it was continued or it was resurrected by Ahab. He not only encouraged the worship of idols, he brought in women to be temple prostitutes. That is Ahab. He told the people that if they slept with a temple prostitute, they will be drawn closer to God and to heaven. This happened in the groves and in the temple of Samaria. These were the days of Ahab. He led the children of Israel into a lot of idolatry and a lot of things which are actually should not be even spoken of. I'm looking for something. Uh, First Kings chapter 14. Let me look if this is the thing. First Kings chapter 14. Look at First Kings chapter 14 verse 24. What was happening in Israel? Yes. And they were yes. Yes. They were Sodomites. These people, when 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 you read, go back to First Samuel chapter two. Look at First Samuel chapter two. These Sodomites continued the, the things that were happening in the book of First Samuel chapter 2, but they went to uh, more heathenism and went into more absurd things. Look at uh, 
first Samuel chapter 2. Uh, I'm, I'm giving you a verse. First Samuel chapter 2. Remember, we are looking at, uh, to, uh, at Elijah. First Samuel chapter 2. And uh, verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of who? They knew not the Lord. And what did these guys do? Verse 22. Now Eli was very old and had all that his sons did unto all Israel. And now they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of congregation. Can you point at the sanctuary? Where is the tabernacle of the congregation? The women assembled at the tabernacle of congregation. Where? Where is that? Huh? <laughs> that is the place. No. I'll give you. I'll let you meditate upon that. You know, when the temple was built anew, it was not built as we think of it later. We had uh, some places which were added there. But um, all the same, let us just concentrate on this, that you will do it. You go back to the book of Leviticus and the book of uh, Numbers, you will see where is the tabernacle of congregation. 22 says that, and this they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of congregation. So they, they, they thought about nothing about God. There was a lot of apostasy that was going on in Israel. Now, what was Israel? Seventh-day Adventist church, is it? Yeah, they were the representatives of God at that time. And so when Ahab came to the reign, he led these people to Baal worship. He not only encouraged the worship of idols, he brought in women to be temple prostitutes. He told the people that if they slept with the temple prostitutes, they would be drawn closer to God. This, this is history. If the, In those strange times, everything was all right. Sin was good. Sleeping with Jezebel temple was brought one closer to God. Everyone was going to heaven regardless of their lives. The children of God were drawn uh, against God. First Kings chapter 16, verses 31. First Kings 16, 31. This is history that uh, I'm looking at. First Kings 16, 31. And it came to pass as if it had been a little thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbal, king of Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. So he, he did not just worship Baal, he served him. Notice the word he served him. No wonder there is a showdown between Ahab and Elijah. He served him. He went into bed with the Sidonians, the, this Baalim people. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. So, uh, uh, about taking uh, Jezebel and all these immoralities, uh, this is what we find in PK. Page 114, 115. Taking to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbal, king of Sidonians, and high priest of Baal, Ahab served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. Not only did Ahab introduce Baal worship at the capital city, but under the leadership of Jezebel, he erected heathen altars in many high places, where in the shelter of surrounding groves that priests and others connected with this seductive form of adultery exerted their baleful influence until well nigh all Israel were following after Baal. There were none like unto Ahab who did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up, and he did very abominable in following idols, according to all things as did the Amorites, 
whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So this was another level of idol worship. Maybe we, we always complain about Berlin in the church today, but we are yet to see things that have never been witnessed. And yet, yes, we are seeing them. Some of them are spiritually. Uh, we are seeing some spiritual things happening in our churches, which are uh, so uh, gross that um, uh, uh, somebody wonders if it, this is the church of God. What is spoken of Jezebel in history? Jezebel had been immersed in the false worship of the heathen deities Baal and Ashtoreth. These gods and their followers were foremost in attacking the commandments of God, especially the fourth and the seventh commandment. Religion was a license to do wrong. What is the fourth commandment? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What is the seventh commandment? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Is it? Yeah. This, these are the these are the things that Jezebel forced on Ahab. And so the children of Israel were departing. No wonder you find Israel going into captivity. And the, what does the Lord say? And the land enjoyed her Sabbaths. Why? Because the Sabbath was not being kept as it should be kept. Uh, PK 115. PK 115. This is what we, we find in PK 115. Ahab was weak in moral power. His union by marriage with an adulterous woman of decided character and positive temperament resulted disastrously both to himself and to the nation. Unprincipled and with no high standard of right doing, his character was easily molded by the determined spirit of Jezebel. His selfish nature was incapable of appreciating the masses of God to Israel and his own obligation as the guardian and leader of the chosen people. So Ahab was a guardian uh, and leader of the chosen people. Under the blight blighting influence of Ahab's rule, Israel was wander, Israel wandered far from the living God and corrupted their ways before him. For many years they had been losing their sense of reverence and godly fear, and now it seemed as if there were none who dared oppose their lives by the openly standing forth in opposition to the prevailing blasphemy. The dark shadow of apostasy covered the whole land. Images of Balim and Ashtoreth were everywhere to be seen, idolatrous temples and consecrated groves wherein were worshipped the works of men's hands were multiplied in Israel. This is the things that were going in Israel. We are looking at uh, Elijah and how he comes into the picture. And uh, remember, there was a king in front, but there was a person who was actually pushing the king, is it? Yeah, and it's Jezebel. And Jezebel is spoken of in the, thai, in, in the church of Thyatira. Is it? Yeah. That woman, Jezebel, that led to church in 1260 years, which we call Dark Ages. She is the woman behind, and others are doing her biddings. And so Baal worship deny, denied the worship of God. Things were done there. And... Uh, uh, one of the things uh, that were done is uh, God had pro uh, prohibited the children of Israel passing their children into fire. But these things started happening when they started worshipping Baal. And so the air was polluted with the smoke of the sac sacrifices offered to false gods, PK 116. Hill and Bell resounded with the drunken cries of heathen priesthood who sacrificed to the sun to the moon and to the stars. Through the influence of Jezebel and her impetuous priest, the people were taught that idol gods that had been set up were deities, ruling by their mystic power, the elements of earth, fire, and water. The people forgot that the hills and valleys, the streams and fountains were in the hand of the living God, that he controlled the sun, the clouds of heaven, and all the powers of nature. And so they went and served Baal. And so the Lord now starts seeking to bring Israel back to the true worship of Jehovah God. The Lord sought uh, uh, to bring his people to repentance, but nothing helped. Voices were silenced, prophets were killed, and nothing would stand in the way of this new movement. Only one option remained. The Lord must speak to Israel through judgments. You know, 
God every time entreats us until we reach a point of no remedy. There is a verse that speaks of this condition which Israel is it in Chronicles? Second Chronicles? Yes, read it for me. Second Chronicles. That is 36.16? Yes, 36.16. Go to Second Chronicles at six sixteen. God tried to um, um, uh, God strive to bring bring these people to repentance. He strived to uh, 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 woo his people back as a uh, uh, as a mother or a father tries to woo a child back. But uh, Israel Israel could not hear uh, the voice of the Lord speaking to them. Uh, who is there? Second Chronicles 36. 36, 16. Yes. But they must be looking at the Lord. Yes. Christ is back. He is used his forces and doing the wrath to the Lord that was ready with his people till there was no remedy. Yes. Until there is no remedy. How do we reach a point when there is no remedy? What is that point called? What is the name used to no remedy? The end of probation. Why do we have a, a, a point of no probation when Christ and his mediation work is rejected? People reject him completely. This is doing away with the sanctuary. This is doing away with uh, uh, the personality of the Father and the Son and their roles and in the plan of salvation. Where people now do not want anything to do with God, they don't want anything to do with Christ. They, they, they have Baal to sacrifice to. And see, they are bringing sacrifices to Baal. So how can Christ be their mediator if their sacrifices are pointed to Baal? When people turn into false worship, and you see Jeremiah says that my people have committed two sins. Is it Jeremiah 2.11? Jeremiah 2.11. Hath a nation changed their gods which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished. Of ye heavens at this, be horribly afraid, be very desolate, be very desolate, said the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. Which evil? They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. And there's a place he talks about. Uh, the priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law, verse 8, knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. Look at that word, the pastors. And the prophet prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore I yet plead with you, said the Lord, and with your children, children will I plead for pass over the isles of Shittim and see and send unto Kedar and consider diligently and see if there be uh, such a, a thing hath a nation changed their gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which do not profit. So when you change God, you change glory. And glory is the character which fits us for heaven. So if you change the gods, you change the glory, and the glory is the character, which means that you will receive a character which is not of the God of the sanctuary and will not be fitted for heaven. That, that, that is the essence. It is, it is, sometimes we read it, and it seems to us symbol matters that you can just believe anything about God. That is one of the dangerous doctrines that we can ever have in our church. Uh, uh, I say in quote that uh, fall for any other doctrine than a misconception of who God is. Because the moment you have another God, you have just changed the glory. 
and the glory is the character. And so this is something so serious. This is something so salvational that people joke around with that this is something which is not salvation. And as we shall be doing this presentation, you shall see how these things will affect uh, the character of the people. You look at uh, the what is the most important character you see in Jesus Christ? First of all, Christ is the lamb, is it? What is the most prominent character of the lamb? Humility, meekness, is it? If the people change the, their gods and the glory of God, what kind of spirit they possess? I didn't do English classes. What is the opposite of humility? Arrogance. And uh, when arrogance is in your life, you don't you, you don't you care only about yourself. You don't care about the next thing. And so they change the glory. They change the character. They do not have the character of the Lamb. Is it? And John chapter sixteen portrays this this changing of the glory. Look at uh, uh, at the book of John chapter sixteen. When you change the glory. The, the, when you change your gods, you change the glory. And this is the, the kind of the spirit you have. Do you know what Jezebel was doing? What was Jezebel doing in Israel by changing the gods of Israel? He was instilling them, in them the spirit of another god, which is not the lamb of God. I hope you under, we bring this out clearly. In 2 Chronicles 36, 16, what did they do? They killed the servants of the Lord, is it? Why did they do this? They had changed their gods to other gods, and so they didn't have the glory, the character of the God of Israel. And so they ended up killing the messengers under the rulership of false gods. Look at what is going to happen. John 16, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. While these people did this under their false god, they felt that they were serving God. In fact, there is just some slides I have read. It says that... Um, uh, something I read here. In those strange times, everything was all right. Sin was good. Sleeping with Jezebel temple was brought one closer to God. Everyone was going to heaven regardless of their lives. This is under the rulership of uh, Jezebel and all this uh, Baal worship. And so the Lord could only do one thing to save Israel, to bring them under judgments. And so through faithful messengers, the Lord sent repeated warnings to the apostate king and the people, but in vain were these words of reproof. In vain, a, the inspired messengers assert Jehovah's right to be the only God in Israel. They tried their uttermost strength to bring people back to the worship of God. The light so graciously given to them had become darkness. The fine gold had become dim. PK 116. Alas! how the glory of Israel departed. Never before had the chosen people of God fallen so low in apostasy, PK 116. Of the prophets of Baal, there were 450 besides 400 prophets of the groves. Nothing short of the miracle working power of God could preserve the nation from utter destruction. They were sold to Baalim. So the Lord in compassion, Yan, after those who had been led into sin, and he was about to send to them one of the mightiest of his prophets, through whom many were to be led back to allegiance to the God of their fathers. The Lord now chooses someone who was to lead Israel uh, to the worship of the true God. They were steeped in apostasy, and the Lord now raises Elijah to be able to bring 
his children back to to the truth and so after after struggling with other messengers to bring the children of Israel to the truth here now comes the man himself Elijah and what does he come he comes with the judgment many thousands people lived in Israel and this actually did not have the way of the Lord. PK120, PK120, PK120. This is what we find. To Elijah was entrusted the mission of delivering, delivering to Ahab heaven's message of judgment. He did not seek to be the Lord's messenger. The word of the Lord came to him and jealous for the honor of God's cause, he did not hesitate to obey the divine summons though to obey seemed to invite swift destruction at the hand of the wicked king the prophet set out at once and traveled night and day until he reached samaria at the place palace he solicit he solicited no ad, no admission nor waited to be formally announced clad in the coarse garments usually worn by the prophets of the time he passed the guards apparently unnoticed and stood for a moment before the astonishing king now this is the good story this guy was one guy who dared the king ahab and uh, we are just speaking about elijah and what was happening in israel and we are in the book of first kings chapter uh first king chapter 17 first Kings chapter 17 says and Elijah the Tishabite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto her, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. So after God sending many of his messengers and they could not listen to him, what only could bring about a change was a punishment. And it was only by the exercise of strong faith in the unfailing power of God's word that Elijah delivered his message. Had he not possessed implicit confidence on the one whom he served, he would never have appeared before Ahab. God's people in the end time have to be courageous people. They have to be people who are bold. I'm not speaking about being arrogant. You, you see, sometimes we think arrogance is boldness. No, arrogance is not boldness. Boldness is something that comes when the Spirit of God possesses you and you lose yourself. You don't go after actually exalting self, but exalting God. It is not you are doing, but going in the faith of the Lord, whether you die or you live, the will of God prevail. And so this was a man who had boldness and faith in the Lord. We are told that Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. And he prayed that it should not rain, and it rained. And uh, on his way to Samaria, uh, Elijah had passed over flowing stream hills covered with vanja and stately forest that seems beyond the reach of drought. Everything on which the eye rested was clothed with beauty. In the time when there was so prosperity, and uh, the people was seeing that nothing could happen to the land of Israel. And you know what they attributed these blessings to? They attributed to the worship of Baal. They did not attribute it to God. Uh, I think it is, uh, uh, is it in the book of uh, Jeremiah? Let us try to find it in the book of Jeremiah. At this flourishing, what, whom did they attribute all these things? Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 44. Let us start from verse 15. There's a time that uh, Israel was in prosperity, 
God was prospering them even though they were serving Baal, and they thought that these blessings came from Baal. Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt in Patros, under Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour our drink offerings unto her as we have done we and our fathers our kings and our princes in the cities of where judah and in the streets of jerusalem for then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil but since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wandered all things and have been consumed by the sword and the by famine. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? So they attributed the blessings of God to this birth. And God said, cut it off. Let there be no rain for three and a half years. And let us see if by burning incense to these things, there will be anything. You see, when you look at uh, the church of God today, it seems that it is flourishing. So in the outside, but um, it is the rain that caused everything to flourish in Israel, is it? What will cause the church of God to prosper? The Spirit of God. That is the rain. If they don't have the Spirit, don't be, don't be lied to, don't be cheated that they are prospering. Even if you see many buildings and you see everything in the church, you see buildings and you see chairs and all these things, don't think that these things are prosperity. If the church doesn't have the Spirit of God, it doesn't matter even if it builds three stories, where actually we have the first balcony, the second balcony, and the screens are all over for people to hear the sermon. That is not prosperity. God says that where actually the church is so poor, yet it is in the spirit of the Lord, that is where he says that the church is prospering, not where we have magnificent uh, cathedrals. And so in uh, we are told uh, that um, he looked upon the king in his beauty and self was forgotten. He beheld the majesty of holiness and felt himself be inefficient and unworthy. He was ready to go forth as heaven's messenger, unawed by the human because he had looked upon the divine. He could stand erect and fearless in the presence of earthly monarchs because he had bowed low before the king of kings. It is the people who have learned what it means to pray that can pass. And you see, <laughs> I don't know. It says that uh, Elijah passed unnoticed before the gods, and immediately he was in the presence of. Uh, look, let, let me just read it again. PK one twenty one twenty one. It says the prophet set out at once and travelled night and day until he reached Samaria. At the palace, he solicited no admission nor waited to be formally announced. Clad in the coarse garments usually worn by the prophets of that time, he passed the guards apparently unnoticed and stood for a moment before the astonished king. How was Elijah able to pass unnoticed before the guards? God hid him before the guards and brought him in the very presence of the king. Now, what do you think? Can we pray like Elijah when these things happen? We find ourselves standing before Uhuru today and telling him, you have sold Kenya or any president. You stand in the presence of Trump and tell him, you are the one who was causing trouble in USA. Do you know why such a things are not happening in our lives? We haven't learned to bow down before God. And uh, uh, 
in, there is a story that Zadok said which uh, has remained in our lives and uh, I was sharing with Remy the power of prayers. I think, I don't know Zadok where you said you were and uh, you are having the trouble. You had left the school or what, something of that kind. It was related to education and uh, you went to a place and the policemen were looking for you and you were singing band and you sang until people wondered what was happening. There's a story you are narrating for us about how you sang in some place until even the people of that place wondered what kind of the people are these with all this affliction that they were having. There's power in having a connection with God. Even your enemies can notice that there's something that is happening to you. And it is when the people of God will be reconsecrated back to God that actually they will see the marvelous workings of God. And uh, I want to tell you or read to you another story in the Bible about having a connection with God. This is so important and also it's found in a writing, uh, I think it is page 54, but I, I, I'll try to look for this uh, that is in great controversy. That is, uh, let me just type this. Look at uh, great controversy, page 259, paragraph 1. Men who are connected with God, the reformers, 259.1 GC. We need a connection with God. That is what I'm saying. Elijah had a connection with God. We need a connection with God. Have you found it? Start from uh, 258.2. .2. Of this deliverance from the enraged mob of one on, on this or on one of these occasions, Wesley said, are, you, are we there? Many endeavored to throw me down while we were going downhill on a slippery path to the town. As well, judging that if I was once on the ground, I should hardly rise anymore. So they wanted to throw him down headlong, the way they wanted to throw Jesus Christ. But I made no stumble at all, nor the least slip, till I was entirely out of their hands. Although many strove to hold, lay hold of my collar or clothes to pull me down, they could not fasten at all. Only one got fast hold of the flap of my waistcoat, which was soon left in his hand, and the other flap in the pocket of which was a bang knot was torn but half, but half off. A lusty man just behind struck at me several times with a large oaken stick with which if he had struck me once on the back part of my head, it would have saved him all further trouble. This is fun, is it? But every time the blow was turned aside, you see, he tried to hit him, but every time the blow was turned aside, I know not how, for I could not move to the right hand or left. Another came rushing through the press and raising his arm to strike me on a sudden let, on a sudden let it drop and only stroked my head saying, what soft hair he has. Huh? Quickly, are you seeing this thing? Mm. The guy wanted to hit him on the head hard and only managed to touch him and say, hey, this, this hair is so soft. This is a connection with God. Huh? Are you seeing that? Yes, it continues. The very first man who whose hearts were turned were the heroes of the town, the captains of the rubble on all occasions, one of them having been a prize fighter at the gardens. Continue the story now. By how gentle degrees does God prepare us for his will? Two years ago, a piece of brick grazed my shoulders. Huh? It was a year after that that storm struck me between the eyes. The brick on the shoulders, and the stone between the eyes. How can the stone hit between your eyes? Really? He continues. This is Wesley. Last month I received one blow, and this evening two. One before we came into the town, and one after we had were gone out. But both were us nothing. For though one man struck me on the breast with all his might, and the other one and the other on the mouth with such a force that the blood gushed out immediately. I felt no more pain from either of the blows than if they had touched me with a straw. 
I'm talking about a connection with God. This is was this, this is how Elijah was connection connected with God, and this is how the reformers were connected with God. They they walked with him in their daily life. And we are talking about persecution that is coming, and yet we are told that the trouble before us is greater in anticipation. So it was only by strong faith that uh, Elijah was able to go and stand before this king. And uh, in James chapter 5 verse 7 we are told Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six years. Now at this point I want you to notice something. The people or Elijah said that it will not rain and at his prayer it rained. Do you know who will cause the rain to come down? The Elijah people. There has been no rain. It is by the servant of God, Etijones and Wagona, that there was the beginning of the latter rain. Is it? And when the children of Israel rejected it, Sister White says that God went back. Christ went back. Is it? In one of the writings, he says that Christ went back. The latter rain was with hell. What will bring it down? What brought it down? They were the third Elijah. We are to finish the reformation. It is only Elijah who will bring down the rain by righteousness, by faith, by standing before these kings and telling them that they are leading the children of God in apostasy. And so uh, he was a man of like faith, and he prayed, and it did not rain. And Elijah the Shabbat, who was one of the inhabitants of Gilead, said that it will not rain. But now at the Reformation, the Lord brings back rain. And so we, God is waiting for a people who will actually go in the spirit of Elijah. God is saying that uh, we have to come out of this apostasy and call the children of Israel out of apostasy. And so how did Elijah go about this? How did Elijah go about this? And uh, we have been talking about uh, wanting the means to finish the gospel work. But... Uh, it is like the devil has put a plan that uh, those who are presiding upon the truth shall not have means. But uh, who gave means to Elijah? It was God himself. What fed Elijah? The ravens. Unclean animals. You know, it is uh, amazing that uh, Sister White says that um, it will be the Gentiles who shall give out the money to finish the work. And so we, 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 we are yet to see the Lord working, but it needs faith. And so God will provide. It will happen again. Uh, Desire of Ages 121, 122. It says, often, Desire of Ages 121, 122, often the follower of Christ is brought where he cannot serve God and carry forward his worldly enterprises. Perhaps it appears that obedience to some plain requirement of God will cut <coughs> off his means of support let me try to yes uh da 121 122 perhaps it appears that obedience to some plain requirement of god will cut off his means of support satan will make him believe that he must sacrifice his conscientiousness conviction but the only thing in our world upon which we can rely is the word of god seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Even in this life, it is not for our good to depart from the will of our Father in heaven. When we learn the power of his word, we shall not follow the suggestions of Satan in order to obtain food or to save our lives. Our only questions will be what is God's command and what is his promise. Knowing this, we shall obey the one and trust the other. In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support. Then what? 
cattle. Because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers, they will be forbidden to buy or sell. It will finally be decreed that they shall be put to death. Are you the one who is troubling Israel? I'm coming to that. I have 20 minutes to see this presentation end. And uh, look at Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Habakkuk. Three seventeen and 18. This was one of my uh, memory verses when uh, I became a Christian back in 2012. Yes. 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 Verse 18. Yes, the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like his feet and he will make me walk upon my high places to the chief uh, singer of my string instrument. So even though the earthly support may be cut off, but uh, the children of God uh, will rely on God. And then uh, after telling the king that there will be no rain, actually, the guy disappeared. He could not be found. And where, where did uh, Ahab go when he left uh, uh, the palace king? Was it at River Kidron? And then he went to the woman to be fed. And it was just within, but uh, Ahab sent the people all over in neighboring countries to look for him, and they never found him. God hid him. God will hide us when it needs to be hidden. When they'll be looking at us. Look, look at the Lord say he will hide us in the book of Isaiah chapter 33. Where will he hide us? 33. From verse 13 it says, Hear ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid, fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire, who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding uh, of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. 16. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be munitions of rock, bread shall be given him, waters shall be sure. That is where he shall be hidden. And uh, God will do this marvelous work, but it is for the children of God to remain steadfast in him. The king made diligent inquiry, but the prophet was not to be found. Queen Jezebel angered over the message that had looked up the treasure of heaven, lost no time in conferring with the priest of Baal, who united with her in cursing the prophet and defying the wrath of God. But notwithstanding their desire to find him who had uttered the word of who, they were destined to meet with disappointment, nor could they conceal from others a knowledge of the judgment pronounced in consequence of the prevailing apostasy. Tidings of Elijah's denunciation of the sins of Israel and his prophecy of sweet coming punishment quickly spread throughout the land. Tidings from East. They will spread. God will make his children spread the news to go over. The message of Revelation chapter 7 shall be heard. The message of the East, the sealing message, and the impending judgment and the judgment that are about to fall. When the second angel joins with the third angel in the loud cry and the Elijah people rise up now to do the work, 
the messages shall swell and God shall work mightily among his people. And we are told that there is a time that many shall fall by sword, but there is a time that they, should not, they will not continue to fall. And so these messages will spread. The fears of some were aroused, but in general, the heavenly message, message was received with scorn and ridicule. So there are people who are going to ridicule the message. But Elijah had a mission to perform, and as long as the Lord saw fit, no amount of searching will bear fruit. The people will think to do away with the people of God, but we are told that every seed at that time that can be shared or will be shared will be a seed unto salvation of men. So let us look at what Elijah does as we try to wrap up. Go back to First King. If if you want to know the truth that uh, we have been actually, you know, people people like a pastor was telling me that. Uh, uh, why is this thing so important unto many people? You know, he hears rumors about me and all that, and uh, what uh, I do because I'm on Facebook. The three elders that are, uh, uh, are the officials of the church there, they know me and we are friends, and they see what they post, and so they discuss among themselves. They, this one time, the, the pastor came into the church, and uh, I had gone to fellowship there, and he said. Uh, what is this that uh, people keep on fighting? You know, he, he, he couldn't address me. He didn't address me. Let me say he couldn't address me. He didn't address me, but he was talking indirectly. Why, why are people bothered with this thing? We cannot understand God. Whether we have three gods or two, what is the problem? Let us work out our character and be fit for heaven. And uh, what if Elijah had said that Yes, you have ex exchanged. This nation has exchanged it is God. Let us just work our character. How do you work character in such a situation? You can't work out your character because we found out that if you change the gods, you change the uh, the, the character. You change the glory. First Kings, First Kings, chapter eighteen. First Kings, I'll be there in a moment. Chapter 18. And it came after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I'll send rain upon the earth. It came to pass after many days, that is three years, that the Lord now commands. Elijah to go up and show himself before the king. Has it taken many days after 1888? It has taken many days, 170 plus years. And the Lord now is telling his servants, I'm sending you, go, go and stand before the kings, go and stand before your pastors, go and stand before your elders. This is the work of Elijah. And what is the work of Elijah? To lead the hearts of the children to their fathers and the fathers to the children. And what did the fathers believe? Is what the children have to believe. This is the work of Elijah, to restore the pillars that held the temple when they entered the most holy place. A system of truth, all of them, and prepare for the end. This is what the Lord is doing in Israel. He is putting the spirit in his servants who are standing in boldness and declaring the things without thinking of what shall be of them. Whether they be killed, whether something happens to them, they, they, they don't care. All they care is about the business of God. And he has passed and there, there was no rain. And uh, now Ahab uh, Elijah has to go and stand before the king of Israel. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was so famine in Samaria. There was famine in Samaria. And let us see how this ends up. Elijah had been away for quite a while, three and a half years to be exact. 
things were looking horrible throughout the land of Israel, the famine was ripping apart the once proud nation. The time had come for Elijah to return. The evangelicals have beaten Seventh day Adventists until we have nothing. No justification by faith, no sanctuary, no God, no health message. Everything is gone. We have been beaten. We are dry as it were the ancient Israel. Patriarchs uh, uh, PK, this is uh, prophets and kings, prophets and kings. This is what it says. Thus it had come to pass that God was now visiting his people with the severest of his judgments. The prediction of Elijah was meeting with terrible fulfillment. For three years the messenger of war was sought for in the city after city and nation after nation at the mandate of Ahab. Many rulers had given their oath of honor that the strange prophet could be found in their dominions. Yet the search was continued for Jezebel and the prophets of Baal hated Elijah with a deadly hatred and they spared no effort to bring him within reach of their power and still there was no rain. At last, after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. In obedience to the command, Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab about the time that the prophet set forth on his journey to Samaria. Ahab had proposed to Obadiah, the governor of his household, that they make thorough search for springs and brooks of water in the hope of finding pasture for their starving flocks. And so the king takes one direction and Obadiah, the faithful one, takes another direction. And instill in the fallen churches, instill in the independent ministries, we have a people who are faith, serving the Lord faithfully as Obadiah. And the Elijah people are like the procession, where actually they sound a cry. We are told that the message of Revelation chapter 18 starts with an angel and then a procession joins in. This pro pro procession now, after joining in the angels <laughs> with this angel, they pronounce, Behold, the Lord is coming. And then the ten rises. Five foolish, ten wise. And so Obadiah is there to join the procession. He's, he has been serving the Lord faithfully and feeding these people. And now God wants to speak to the nation. Verse 3 and 5 says, and Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophetess of the Lord, the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. There are people who shall still do the work. And so they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way to himself by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Uh, and as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that troubled Israel? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. So, Although Obadiah was one of the wise virgins that was serving the Lord according to the truth he had received, he sees that Elijah is the troubler of Israel. Because he said, and as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my Lord uh, Elijah? He worshipped him as if. And he answered him, I am, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. He revered the Lord, this man Obadiah. And he sees that this is the servant of the Lord. And look at the, the words that uh, Obadiah tells Elijah. Verse 10. Verse 9. Obadiah says, and he said, what have I seen that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord had not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou saith, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. 
And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me, but I thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord that I would, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets? And so he, he narrates the story until verse 15. And so God had blessed Obadiah, and Obadiah saw Elijah. There are people in these churches who will notice that people are doing something and they will want to join them to carry their work. During the apostates of Israel, Obadiah had remained faithful. There are people who are going to remain faithful. And Ahab handed all over the Middle East for Elijah, but now that he was going to finally see him, he was scared to death. The word goes to Elijah. And Verse 16, so Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast fallen, followed who? Baalim. So what was the greatest issue in the apostates of Israel? The worship of Baal. This is what caused Israel a great distress. You want to serve Baal? And you see, <laughs> they are serving Baal and they want the rain, is it? That is what they are doing. They are serving Baal, but they want rain. For how long have we been praying for the latter rain to fall? Many years. We are serving Baal and we are praying for rain. This is the same thing that Israel was doing, serving Baal and praying for the rain. We are serving Baal and praying for the latter rain. It, it cannot happen. It will never happen. And Jeremiah, you know, when these things were happening in the latter times, Jeremiah and Ezekiel were there. And here is what uh, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah chapter 3. They are praying for rain, but it's not raining. And Jeremiah connects this thing of the literal rain with the spiritual rain very well. Jeremiah chapter 3. Verse 2, lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lain with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with the what? War domes. And with thy wickedness. Verse 3, therefore, the showers has been, and... There have been what? No? no there have been no latter rain. And thou has a war's forehead, thou refused to be ashamed. You are praying for rain and you are worshipping Baal. Look unto the hills what you have done. Every grove was a grove of Baal. Every hill was filled with these altars of Baal. And the people are praying for the rain and tell them no. The, the rain is not going to come. There, there will be no showers. There is not going to be an experience of the early rain. Neither there will be an, a latter rain unto this land, unto the seventh day Adventist. Why? Thou hast a worse forehead. And what is on the forehead of the war? Mystery Babylon, the mother of all. And what does the war say? Trinity is what? The mystery doctrines that from every other doctrines finds its root. No literal rain, no latter rain, no spiritual rain. Jeremiah connects it so well that a, a, a young child can see it. You have a war for him. There is only one war in the Bible. And it is 
the false church. And on its forehead, it's written mystery Babylon. And the mystery of Babylon was its worship of false gods. And this is the gods that they have adopted. And uh, it, it is interesting. Go back to 18 of First Kings. Will you give me 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Go back to First Kings chapter 18. We are coming to an end. 15 minutes we shall be done. I, I believe so. Though I just skip over some things. He comes to Israel. And what does he do? And Elijah said unto all the people. No, before he reaches there, there's something that happened. Verse 18, let us just flow with it. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father, father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So I have sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophetess together into Mount Carmel. I, I don't know what moved this guy to assemble these people. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold he between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Try and look at the commentary of that word, what actually Sister White says, that the people knew what was happening and they couldn't answer a word. Because they knew what Israel was doing at that time. And they were seeking for a savior, but they didn't know how they could look for this savior. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophetess are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I'll dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call ye on the name of your gods and i'll call on the name of the lord and the god that under it by fire let him be god and all the people under and said it is well spoken now the last thing you need when there is drought is rain uh, is uh, is fire because if, if 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 there is a drought like it was and every place is dry when fire comes down from heaven what happens Everything again burns. So it is it is something that you don't need. But I have, Elijah is working in a mysterious way here. The children of God will work in a very mysterious way. What is this asking of the fire? The people do not understand the asking of the fire, but what is fire actually? The Holy Spirit is known as the fire also by the work it does, the work of pricking men into conviction. And the fire goes together with the rain. It sends conviction and it sends comfort in the heart amidst all these things. The word of God is a sword that cuts asunder every soul, every sin of the human being. And then when it has cut and removed everything, it actually comforts, it brings that peace. After God diagonizing exactly the problem you are suffering like say that you are working with a person who has tumors okay you take a shepherd's knife and you cut the tumors is it something of that kind is it a good process that is the most awful process that you can even follow but after the tumors are out of the place and now they are out of this body what comes in this person the comfort of the rain fire to be able to pierce all the sins and remove everything that is not of God and then rain comes to comfort to fill the place that has been left 
so that the wounds may heal, that you may see Jesus Christ. So he asked for this fire, and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and embrace it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your gods, but no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon. 1888 till now, calling for rain, calling for the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work. But it, there, there is none. That is coming from his people. O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. What did they do? They instituted music to dance in the church so that God may see that they are worshipped very well. They instituted every kind of noise in the church of God thinking that this will bring a revival and reformation this will bring fire let us have many prayer weeks let us have many music festivals let us have many programs of the youth they did everything they could do since 1888 until now fire has not come down neither will rain come for first of all fire must come to do its work of separating and then the Holy Spirit for comforting us of being taken, everything that seems temporary in our life being taken away. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is God, either he is talking or he is pursuing, or he is in journey, or for adventure he sleepeth. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lashes till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded and elijah said unto all the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down brethren i, I want to make a solemn statement if the people of the one true God movement can't pray until the rain comes down, then there's a problem with them, a very severe problem. If these are the repairers of the bridge and yet they can't pray until the rain comes, like Elijah, then we have to look again at our lives if we are connected with God. Because the problem with Israel was Baal worship. And he wanted to do away with Baal worship and bring back the uh, uh, the worship of one true God. Is this what is happening in First Kings chapter 18? Exactly, this is happening in First Kings chapter 18. Balim should be done away with and then the worship of one true God. Is that what we are trying? But why is there that there is no rain? We have to go back to the drawing board and see what is wrong, actually. Because it's not raining when it should be raining. There is no fire. People, people are, in fact, <coughs> I'll skip on that. And uh, Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto him. The word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as wool contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did in the second time and the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round the altar and he filled the trench also with fire. And it came to pass the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord, the God of whom? Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, no strange God. He doesn't mention any strange name here. He mentions the name of the patriarchs who knew the worship of one true God. In fact, uh, uh, there is a verse in Genesis which knows that says that Abraham will command his household to worship the one true God. The Lord knew that he will command uh, uh, his household to worship. The one true God. I don't know if somebody can find that verse in the book of uh, Genesis where God knew that Abraham will lead uh, his 
children to the worship of one true God. It is? 1819, let me check it. Yes. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. They shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. And there is a quote that says that uh, uh, Abraham had a household. Uh, and the people are there who worship the one true God. So Elijah calls upon the God of these people. And he says, hear me, O God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known that this day thou art God in Israel, that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this may know that art thou, thou art the Lord God, and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Everything. It did away with it. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Do you see how this movement will be a mightier movement if we can be consecrated to God and pray and the latter rain starts falling? And how do we know that the latter rain is falling? Sometimes it may be falling where we are and we are not receiving it. What is the latter rain actually? Deuteronomy says that it is gathering the fragments of the light that has been put under the bushels of the traditions of men. This is, the, this is how the latter rain is coming. And if you are not participating in gathering the fragments of this truth that has been put under the bushels of traditions, then you know you cannot participate in the latter rain. And so this is the, the time of the latter rain. The time that we are in is the time. We are not to wait for the latter rain. Zechariah chapter 10. In closing. Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah chapter 10. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Ask the Lord of rain in the time of the latter rain. How do we know that it is the time of the latter rain? Actually, that is one question that we have to ask ourselves. Because he's saying that ask of the Lord ye rain in the time of the latter rain. Uh, how do we know that it is the time of the latter rain? Have you ever pondered upon that thing? How do we know that it is the time of the latter rain so that we should ask for the latter rain? It was to be a study, but I was preaching, is it? How do we know that it is the time for the latter rain to ask the latter rain? What makes us know? That is the time of the latter rain. Not in the little, but in the spiritual. Because we can't ask if it is not the season of it. You cannot ask for something when it is not its season. Yeah. You can't ask for the latter rain when it is time for spring. But do the children of God understand the time of the latter rain? There is one challenge that I'm posing to us. Think about it. Messages, the messages that bring here are harvest seed, rising seed, or for harvest seed. So, for that to take place, then there must be 
the spirit of God on you. That way, you are even sorry. We are in the dispensation where the three angels' messages were given. Actually, in 18, from 1844. And from that dispensation, we should be asking for the last one. Yeah, that is that, that's a good track. I, I think uh, th this Bible has something interesting. Zadok, help me with it. Just take this for a while. Let, let me go to Revelation chapter 14. I'll, I'll pull out something that uh, is actually interesting. I want just to read it. I have bookmarked my... Is it... Uh, The reason why God was to do this. Yeah, it is 14, but this uh, a quote that. There's a quote that uh, talks about the reason why God gives the third angel's message. Yes, this is the quote, MS 92, 1904. Listen to what it says. The churches have become as described in the 18th ch chapter of Revelation. The churches has become as described in the 18th chapter of Revelation. What is the condition of the church in Revelation chapter 18? It has become a foul, a habitation of every every unclean and foul bird. So the churches, when they reach this condition, then there's something that happened. Why are the message of Revelation 14 given because the prin the princes of the churches have become corrupted. Apparently the whole world is guilty of receiving the mark of the beast, but the prophet sees a company who are not worshiping the beast and who have not received his mark in their forehead or in their hands. Here is the patience of the saint, he declares, here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Now. You look here. How, how do you know that uh, it is the time of the latter rain? The churches re reaches the condition as described in Revelation chapter 18. When the churches reaches that condition, God arises a people to oppose that condition. And they are seen as the third angels, people proclaiming the message. He sees the church in danger of receiving the mark of the beast. So, I want you to think about it. Is this the time to ask of the latter rain? Are people in danger of receiving the mark of the beast? And the image of it, because the test is the image, is it? Yeah, for the people of God, the test is the image, and for the people of the world, the, the test is the mark. So the people are in danger of receiving the mark of the beast. Here we have a people overcoming the image of the beast. And here we have the churches reaching the condition described in Revelation chapter 18. And so God rises them with the third angel's message. What is the third angel's message? Justification by what? By faith. In verity. And so it unites with the second angel's message. Babylon is fallen. Babylon is done what? It's fallen because people are in danger of receiving the mark of the beast. God rises a people who are having a victory over the image. And so they oppose the condition in Revelation chapter 18. And I, I think it is because our people don't understand a thing. We barely understand anything. And the people who understand something, they are not converted. You know, we can study the Bible diligently and spread the truth as should be spread. Uh, TM says that uh, we can stand on the pulpit and teach the Bible truth as it is diligently but yet we are never converted because Satan also studies the Bible and he knows the prophecy so well. 
that even he was able to prevent the people accepting Jesus Christ. And as he did in the Old Testament, when the people were about to enter into Canaan, Numbers 25, he introduced false gods so that the people may not enter into the Canaan land. And you, we saw that quote that he will do the same. He will introduce false gods so that people may not enter into the spiritual Canaan. And so as the condition of the churches reaches what is described in Revelation chapter 18, those who are having victory over the image should understand now the world is in danger of accepting the mark of the beast and they should rise combining the second angel's message and the third angel's message. And my brethren, you cannot do that when you are not converted. It may be falling before us and yet we will not participate in it. And Elijah gathered the people together. And the people have to see the manifestation in our camps a conviction, a rending of heart and not garments as never before. People have to see the effects of the latter rain. Can you see the literal effects of the latter rain in the fields? Is it something that should be hidden in a spiritual life? No, it is something that it should be visible. In fact, it says in a Christ Object Lesson 415. Let us read it and then if somebody has something, we pray. COL 415. Yes, Zadok, you can take it. Thank you. See all 415. Uh, I have forgotten the paragraph, but I just give you when I get it. See all 415. Is it paragraph 5? Yes, it is paragraph 5. See all 415, paragraph 5. I'll read it, and if somebody has a comment, they can comment and then. We shall be able to ask the Lord to convert us once again, to fill us with his Holy Spirit that we may finish the work. We are the Elijah movement, the one true God movement of Mount Carmel. And we have to pray that fire comes down. It leaks every dust, every rubble, everything that is not of God in our lives so that the comforter may come down in another way and be able to guide us through the last sins. He says that, uh, uh, repent ye and be baptized that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 319, and then he will send Jesus Christ until the time of restitution. We have to be filled with Jesus once again as the spirit of comforter. First of all, he has to slay everything. He has to remove everything and then comfort us and guide us through the end time. COL 415. Those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, Behold who? You are God. Is this the message of uh, the virgins? Of the profession, or procession? It says that, Behold the bridegroom does what? Coming. The last race of merciful light. Be careful. The last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love the children of God are to manifest his glory. What does the word manifest mean? To show. It has to be seen, is it? It is something that is evident in their life. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. The light of the sun, the light of the sun of righteousness is to shine forth in good works in words of truth and deeds of holiness, Isaiah chapter 58. This is the last message to the world. As the church reaches the condition of, Isaiah, of Revelation chapter 18, the Lord is raising up people who can be able to sound the second and the third angel's message. Justification by faith in the work of Isaiah chapter 58. I know this has taken long, one hour, 38 minutes. Is there anyone? Maybe that uh, has <coughs> to add on the sentiments that uh, we have covered. I know I haven't gone into some of the deep things that are happening around the world, but another time we shall be able to cover us. So, 
listen to this those ministers who are men pleasers who cry peace peace when god has not spoken peace might well humble their hearts before god asking pardon for their insincerity and their lack of moral courage pk 14142 it is not from love for their neighbor that they smooth down the message entrusted to them but because they are self indulged and is loving true love seeks first the honor of god and the salvation of souls those who have this love will not evade the truth to save themselves from the unpleasant results of plain speaking when souls are in peril god's ministers will not consider self but will speak the word given them to speak refusing to excuse or palliate evil how i pray that in this room that uh, god will re-energize all of us now that we understand it is the time for asking the latter rain if really we are working with the lord this is the time to ask for the latter rain if if we really understand the elijah's message and what we have read in revelation chapter 14 that when the churches are reaching the limit of a revelation 18 this is the time that the lord raises us up a people how will you be part of the movement of elijah daily reconcentration and uh, giving your life to god and you know something when they start this message you know some of us will be translated alive without tasting death because elijah was translated without seeing death and uh, whether we seal the testimony with our own blood we have one surety that we are coming up in the special resurrection to hear the covenant of god with the 144 those who have kept the law of god and this gives me hope this gives me courage for such a time as this when apostasy is feeding the world i always pray that as a family the gospel sounders and the people involved with it they, they will go out to do their work they will not think about anything they will not think about ease elijah never thought about ease he went about doing the work and that is what i'm praying that the gospel sounders will be one of the people or the ministry used to finish the gospel i don't know what is your prayer but that has been my prayer ever since that uh, I'll be part of the ministry that is really yearning to finish the work. Not only yearning, but by their life, their daily living, they show that they want to finish the work. Let us cut off everything. Let us come back to God and ask him of the latter end in the time of the latter end. God bless us. Mm -hmm.